So thank you very much, Natalia, for that opening. I hope it's the start of a really successful conference. In fact, I know it's going to be. Uh, and I think that's illustrated by our first speaker, who's uh, Abiba Kamarazaman uh, from the University of Malaya in Malaysia, who's going to talk about how stigma impacts on the 1990-90 goals. Now, I'm sure you all uh, know Adiba. Uh, she's president of the International AIDS Society, a fantastic physician, dean of the Faculty of Medicine in the University of Malaysia and we're all really looking forward to your talk. In the next 15 minutes we will discuss how stigma will impact the 1990-90 goals. As we know stigma has been the Achilles heel of the HIV AIDS response globally. We have uh, the drivers of stigma that include individual fears of transmission from casual contact, as well as lack of awareness and knowledge regarding HIV transmission. We then have the uh, societal uh, factors that facilitate uh, the worsening of stigma. For instance, laws against uh, people who inject drugs, criminal laws against sex work, cultural and uh, cultural norms, cultural and gender norms, um, such as um, homophobia, as well as uh, existing systems. Intersecting all this are also uh, existing stigma against individual uh, factors, such as race, class, gender, sex sexuality, substance use, sex work. And along with HIV, um, then, you know, uh, intersex and uh, lead to manifestations of stigma. Stigma itself uh, can uh, be uh, shown in, in three ways. They're either internalized stigma where the individual self-stigmatizes self um, such as endorsement of, a neg of negative beliefs and feel negative feelings associated with uh, characteristic. An example of this would be, I am a bad person because I have HIV. The second type of stigma is known as anticipated stigma, where expectations of discrimination, uh, such as I fear my wife will leave me if she finds out about my HIV. And then of course, actual experiencing stigma and uh, uh, discrimination, such as people who actually lose their jobs because of um, the HIV status. So what all this leads to is that um, what, what stigma leads to is then it keeps people down, it keeps people away, and it keeps people in, meaning uh, it prevents people from coming forward for and, and access treatment and care in the case of HIV. How pervasive is stigma? We have looked at um, our own medical students and uh, doctors and dentistry students at our uh, institution and I'm uh, sad to say that unfortunately stigma, particularly towards uh, men who have sex with men, and people who inject drugs, that, uh, even more so than people living with HIV, remains pervasive in, um, in, in, in Malaysia. This is just an example of a survey that we did, which showed that um, there exists uh, very negative uh, feelings towards uh, MSM, people who inject drugs and people living with HIV in comparison to um, general patients in this survey that we did amongst medical and dental students. So in terms of um, uh, uh, reaching the 1990-90 global goals for HIV, stigma plays a major barrier to HIV services. This was a survey done uh, several years ago, which shows uh, that multiple layers of stigma experienced by sex workers, men who have sex with men, transgender, and people who use drugs and migrants uh, in the Asia Pacific region. 
And from this survey, we learned that 65% felt ashamed of um, either the HIV status or um, uh, their, their gender uh, identity. And out of those, uh, because of the stigma, 22% actually avoided going to local clinics. 11 had actually 11% actually were denied health services, and 7% were denied um, sexual and reproductive health services. So it is real, it is um, that uh, stigma leads to diminished access to health services. This is a, compile a summary of uh, studies that uh, gives further evidence that stigma leads to health inequities, um, such as uh, mental health. Um, uh, there is a definite correlation between stigma and depressive and anxiety systems symptoms, coping uh, mechanisms, help, helplessness, and even acceptance of one's HIV status. It leads to negative health behaviors, such as lower likelihood of initiation of ART and less adherence to treatment, less medical care visits, as uh, shown earlier, and lower likelihood of partner not notification which then further, of course, leads to uh, reduce HIV testing. Stigma also leads to uh, people having higher, those experiencing stigma also have been shown to have higher viral loads than those who experience less stig stigma. And uh, stigma, of course, leads to um, specific stress source for people living with HIV. Um, uh, as listed there in, in slides. This is uh, another example of a meta-analysis done on HIV-related re stigma and health outcomes in people living with HIV. And once again, in this uh, meta-analysis of 64 studies, there, it was shown that there is definite association between HIV-related stigma and higher rates of depression, lower social support, lower levels of adherence to antiretroviral medications, and access to and usage of health and social services. Now we know that uh, we have a large toolkit of preventive measures as well as treatment in our aims to reach the 1990-90 goals. But we also know that um, in the Asia Pacific region, we have um, uh, not achieve the uh, targets that were set for 2020. Um, unfortunately, in, in my region, in the Asia Pacific region, only three countries have uh, reached the 1990-90 goals, and they are Australia, Cambodia, and Thailand. And that's not surprising because, as from this Global AIDS report from this year, you can see that in, in, in many countries, uh, the coverage for prevention, uh, for many reasons, um, fell far short of um, the, the desired goals. Again, using Asia Pacific as uh, an example, uh, key populations and their partners account for an estimated 98% of new infections. And when you when you think that each and every one of these key population members of key population experiences not just um, HIV-related stigma, but as mentioned before, the intersectionality of um, the stigma for, for those who have, um, for those who are transgenders, for those who are, who are men who have sex with men, sex workers, and inject drugs, you have uh, multiple layers of stigma that then um, worsens uh, their, their ability to come forward for um, treatment or to gain access to prevention services. Once again, uh, a, a study um, done a few years ago shows that about half of people who inject drugs, sex workers, gay men, and other men who have sex with men and transgender people are unaware of their HIV status in um, the Asia Pacific region. So here we, ha here we have the uh, first 90 goal um, not uh, reached, um, and a large uh, factor um, explaining this would be the multiple levels of stigma that uh, members of this key population experience. 
When they do do um, present with HIV or um, or AIDS, uh, it's this chart shows you many um, present with advanced disease with very low CD4 counts, even in, in this day and age, again, um, uh, emphasizing uh, the, the, the delay in coming forward uh, for uh, you know, HIV-related services. <laughs> and so it is uh, with little surprise that uh, the 1990-90 HIV testing and treatment cascade in um, the Asia-Pacific region is um, not, uh, well, we haven't achieved the 90-90-90 targets, 75% for the first uh, target, 60% for the second, and 55% for the third um, goal. So is there, it, what, is, what can be done to reduce stigma? Um, as mentioned, stigma is not just a function of um, uh, the, the fact that someone is living with HIV, but you have the intersectionality with um, other, with, with, with them belonging to risk groups that um, are already uh, stigmatized and discriminated against. Um, you have laws and policies that uh, lead to um, high levels of stigma in society, and you've got cultural norms and uh, societal norms that need to be addressed. So, um, therefore, in order to, uh, to address stigma, one has to approach it not just um, from uh, different levels or multi-levels, but you have to address all the intersectionality as, as discussed, and it obviously needs to be um, a concerted longitudinal effort in, in order to um, address stigma adequately. So here are some examples um, of uh, the different kinds of uh, strategies and recommendations. Obviously, at the individual level, the more knowledge you have, um, the, the less it is that someone is uh, likely to, to stigmatize and discriminate. Um, uh, capacity building to provide uh, uh, adequate care. Uh, interpersonal meaning contact uh, interaction with key populations and the affected community, which is uh, one intervention that we are taking with those students uh, that I showed you um, who have high levels of uh, stigma against uh, people who inject drugs or, or MSM. Giving them exposure to uh, and be able to interact with, the, with these key populations have been shown to reduce uh, stigma. And then finally, and, uh, and probably the most difficult, would be to um, address uh, existing laws and policies that um, uh, worsen uh, stigma and discrimination. The media obviously plays a, a very, very important role. Um, and so having social media campaigns and educating journalists uh, to, uh, to write in a more, in a, in a less stigmatizing way is also, uh, it should also be part of the intervention. Thailand uh, has uh, embarked on uh, key population-led HIV services that um, are uh, gender oriented and free from stigma and discrimination. And uh, this has been shown to improve, for, for example, uh, HIV testing and PrEP services amongst key populations in Thailand. And another example is from Vietnam, where uh, once again, peer driven uh, prevention and treatment programs for people who inject drugs. Uh, have been shown to uh, lead to better coverage of uh, harm reduction programs uh, that have led to reduce HIV incidence as well as increase um, uh, the percentage of uh, HIV zero positive uh, people who inject drugs to achieve the uh, final 90 goal and also reduce, um, uh, sorry, increase the percentage of people being tested. So. Although um, HIV, sorry, although stigma remains uh, pervasive, uh, 
several interventions in, in addition to um, uh, programs to reduce, uh, to, to address stigma per se, um, other interventions that um, uh, engage the communities themselves have also been proven to improve the 1990-90 um, uh, targets for uh, key populations in particular who are heavily stigmatized. And finally, um, employing technology, uh, including uh, technology to enable HIV self-testing is I think uh, another important intervention in regions and countries uh, where stigma is uh, pervasive. And last but not least, uh, um, efforts must be made to decriminalize not just drug use, but sex work, uh, same-sex uh, relationships, uh, as these are all uh, very, very potent um, reasons for uh, stigmatization. Unfortunately, in uh, the Asia-Pacific region alone, uh, 38 countries still have laws that uh, uh, 37 countries still criminalize uh, some aspects of uh, sexual behavior. 11 have compulsory detention center for people who use drugs. Uh, 16 criminalize same-sex relations and 10 actually impose uh, 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 entry for people living with HIV just based on their HIV status. The concern is, of course, throughout the world, there's growing conservative political environment that doesn't um, help with efforts to reduce stigma and um, to address laws and policies uh, that, that stigmatizes and criminalizes. And finally, I would love to end on a happy note, but unfortunately, this, this, uh, this survey that was reported in the last uh, Global AIDS report just tells you how much work that still needs to be done in Asia and the Pacific when it comes to stigma. A, a huge proportion, 34.4% of people who were surveyed between the ages of 15 to 49 years admitted to not wanting to purchase vegetables from a shopkeeper living with HIV uh, from countries uh, around Asia and the Pacific. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid we still have uh, much work to be done when it comes to addressing stigma and discrimination in relation to HIV, not just in Asia and the Pacific, but globally. Thank you very much.